Hey guys, today we're glazing over chalk paint on this old dresser that I found at a thrift store. Here's what the dresser looked like before. I get asked a lot about how I glaze over chalk paint. So I thought that I would glaze this one to show you. First, I prepped it for paint and then I also sanded down the top and restained it, but I'm not gonna go into all of that in this video. For this stunning blue, I used a mix of two Country Chic paint colors, about a quarter of Peacoat, and then three-fourths of Jitterbug mixed together. Every time I spray, I add a little bit of water to my chalk paint, and I always, always, always run it through a mesh filter to make sure no clumps or anything can clog my sprayer. I sprayed it on with my fancy Fuji Q4 paint sprayer that I love so so much this thing sprays like a dream for a completely perfect fine finish there's no need for a paint sprayer with this though i just prefer the paint sprayer but you could definitely brush on the chalk paint as well and this method will work with basically any brand of chalk paint i just love country chic paint i love their colors i love how well it goes on i love the adhesion I actually have this 10% off coupon code for you to use on your Country Chic paint order. So I sprayed on three coats of paint, letting the chalk paint dry completely in between coats. And while I waited for the last coat to dry, I cleaned out my paint sprayer and just let the paint sprayer dry out. So when the chalk paint was all dry, I put my absolute favorite top coat in it. This Verithane polyurethane is water-based and it gives the paint a really, really nice durable finish. Verithane polyurethane is like the only water-based poly that I use. I love it so much. So I put the poly through the mesh filter just like I did with the chalk paint and then I added just a little bit of water again just to thin it out a little bit just to make the paint take a little bit longer to dry. If it takes a little bit longer to dry then it will have more time to spread out and lay flat making the finish even more perfect and much much more soft and smooth. Anyway, I sprayed one good coat of poly all over the chalk paint. This step with the poly is really crucial to having success with glazing over chalk paint. If you don't put a coat or two of poly over the chalk paint, the glaze will soak right into the really porous chalk paint, making it impossible to work with the glaze. So I let that coat of poly dry, and then I sanded it smooth with a fine or very fine surf prep foam sponge. I honestly can't remember which one I used, but it's about the equivalent to a 400 grit piece of sandpaper. The sanding isn't required, but holy cow, it really helps make the final finish soft and smooth. I just lightly sanded to help smooth that poly out, and I didn't push hard when I sanded by hand at all. After it was all soft and smooth, I used my shop vac to suck up all the dust and followed it up with a wipe down with a sticky tack cloth. These tack cloths really, really, really pick up any extra dust that is left over, and they don't leave any lint behind. When all of that dust was completely gone, I sprayed one more coat of poly all over the dresser. Then I let it dry for extra long. I like to let the poly dry at least overnight, but really it's best if it sits for at least 24 hours before moving on to the next step. If you start glazing before the poly has a chance to really dry hard and start to cure, then all of the moisture from the glaze will go right through the still soft poly and right into your paint. Then when you start wiping and working with the glaze, the paint can actually very, very easily rub off. So best practice, just wait 24 hours and then it will be safe to start glazing. I used the Valspar brand of glaze for this project. I typically use, and I love, the Country Chic Paint Glaze, but I didn't have any on hand, so I just went to Lowe's and picked up the Valspar Glaze. I typically like to use the Clear Glaze so then I can tint it whatever color I want with some paint. Country Chic Paint has a black glaze and a brown glaze and a few other colors um, that you don't have to mix with paint. I don't think the Valspar actually has a black glaze, but they have a brown glaze or antiquing glaze, and that's the glaze that I used on this dresser. Since I used the antiquing glaze, I didn't have to mix any paint into the glaze to tint it. But I did pour some glaze into a plastic bowl just so I could add a bit of water to it. I like to add a little bit of water to my glaze just so then it takes a little bit longer to dry, again, giving me more time to work with it. 
Now it's time to actually start glazing. I typically use a super cheap paintbrush from the dollar store for glazing, but I once again didn't have any on hand. So I grabbed my favorite brush that I use for everything else when I brush, the Zebra Round Brush. I brushed the glaze on in one small section, making sure to get the glaze in any corner or detail. I like to let the glaze sit for probably 20 to 40 seconds. I want it to sit long enough that it kind of starts to dry, but I don't want the glaze to really dry before I can get back to it. Then, wearing gloves, I use the baby wipe to wipe off most of the glaze. I'm not gonna lie, I go through quite a few baby wipes whenever I'm glazing. This first coat of glaze is really just a light coat that puts the glaze all over the piece of furniture. Then we'll go back with another coat to add more glaze in certain spots. Whenever I wipe off the glaze, I try to wipe it in the same direction that the wood grain would be going, and I try to use long strokes instead of short strokes. In these panel areas, I kind of push the glaze into the top and the bottom, but I also try to pick up most of the glaze and not leave it all in the edges. I slowly made my way around the whole dresser, working in small sections or like on one drawer at a time. It's kind of hard to see the glaze once I wiped most of it off, especially because of the dark paint and the shadows downstairs, but I promise there was just a little bit of glaze left all over the entire dresser. Just one thin and even coat all over. Then I let the glaze dry for a day. If you put wet glaze over a glaze that hasn't had enough time to dry, the second coat of glaze will just pull up the first coat of glaze. So you have to really let the first coat of glaze dry completely before moving on. I know there is a lot of wait time in this project, but it's totally worth it in my opinion. Once the first coat was dry, I came back with the same brush that I had put in plastic to keep it wet and just put a little bit of glaze in the areas that I wanted some shading. So mostly in the corners and the edges of the piece. Then I wiped some of it back off trying to keep some of the glaze still there but also trying to blend it into the light thin first coat of glaze. I'm not gonna lie, this part is probably the hardest part for me. Just the wetness of wiping with a baby wipe will make the finish look different until it dries again. So it's hard to tell exactly what it's going to look like. So I just try to get it to look the best I can tell and honestly hope for the best. At this point, it's not so much science, but it's a lot of artistry and playing around until it looks good. Once I was happy with one section, I moved around the rest of the dresser until there was shadowing in all of the details. One little tip. If you hate how the glaze looks after it dries, you can always paint over it and start again. Or you can tint some clear glaze with the paint color of the dresser, then put the blue glaze over the dry brown glaze on the dresser to blend in the colors and kind of hide the brown glaze that you don't like.
After I was happy with the glaze, I let the glaze dry overnight. Since I spray the poly on, I don't have to let the glaze dry for quite as long, but if you're gonna brush your poly on over the glaze, you'll need to wait at least 24 hours again before you can move on to this next step. So the next day, I put more poly into my paint sprayer and sprayed three more coats of poly onto the dresser, letting each coat dry completely. I also sanded the poly smooth in between coats to make it extra soft and smooth, just like I had done before the glaze. Here's what the dresser looks like now. Glazing is not for the faint of heart or for a really fast project, but man, isn't that antique to look worth it? If this video was helpful, please hit that like button and subscribe for more helpful videos just like this.